same time kind of thing? They're playing, I think the closest they're playing, because they usually play. Oh, it's 8 o'clock. They it's usually eight play in London. Um, I think they're playing in Chicago at Wrigley Field, which would be amazing. Oh, Jesus, really? Welcome back, America. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see? Did you ever watch The Daily Show? Oh, yeah. John he's, he's always puts his pen, right? Nice. Well, we got somebody. All right, guys, we're just listening to some new order we because do. we got one person, probably my wife. Okay, yeah. That's... Well, what's your intro now again? Temptation by New Order. No, no, no. Uh, yeah. Oh, I, I said, welcome back, America. Oh, welcome back, America. And we lost that person. <laughs> it must have been your wife. <laughs> right? She's like, F this guy. Hey. Uh, I sent the letter. Yeah, you said the letter. Maybe we should just end the stream now. All right, guys, we are... Um, Hello everyone. Okay, if you're not live with us, I know it's been a couple of weeks. I haven't been doing much posting on YouTube. Sorry about that. Just, guys, you know, it's a broken record here, but we just don't yeah, have enough staff, right? We just don't. Yeah, we could talk about that a little bit, right? No, we like, don't we're just, really need it. Yeah, but well, I, we're, yeah. you know, we're opening, right? We've been open for less yeah. than a month. Yeah. Two weeks, really. It's been a little bit of a start, but yeah, nothing Shane and I can't handle. That's true, but yeah, I mean, everyone, it's uh, so sorry about that. I know you guys are loyal to other stations or other ch stations, other channels, uh, and that's good, and we do our best that we can here, but a lot and of times... And we do appreciate the loyalty you guys absolutely. have for us, because you guys are awesome. You guys are great. Hey, C. John, McB, yeah, we want C. McB tier too. I mean, because I, I believe I sent out those. <laughs> I believe I gave them to Joanne to send out. I, I addressed the envelope, right? So I addressed the envelope, I gave it to Julianne, and so if C. McBee joins us, I'm just hopeful that you can confirm that you actually got the stuff. Yeah, so we got, it's a little um, dark here today, too. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Oh, I do know what's up with that. Oh, okay, hi everyone. Shane Stevenson and Steven Tedesco here for our tw 20, oh, he's gonna turn on a couple more lights, All right? Yes, hey. sir. Hey, John, how are you? Hello, Edward, and hello, Michael. Is that better? I out. Did I? <laughs> no, I... <laughs> Thank you, Michael. I do not think you did. Uh, kick the other person out. But good. Thanks, thanks guys. Uh, John... Uh, oh, yeah, we're better. Oh, yeah, yeah. John will be uh, our guest next week. So if you're watching or, you know, we'll do a little better marketing as well for next week. But John Epp from the USS Slater. Looking we'll, very forward to Yeah, that. this cool. is going to be so and cool. And our first guest like yeah, this. Yeah, right. And it couldn't happen to a better person, right? Or a better, well, whatever. Couldn't have a better guest. Thank you. There that's, you go. <laughs> that's right. So I think what we are, I've, I can really see this turning into like you ask a question and then all of a sudden it's going to be a 20 minute conversation. So I only have, you know, it's going to be very organic, but I have about three or four questions for John next week. Uh, and I'm sure it will just, boom, just continue to go and we'll just uh, continue to discuss. Oh, the lights are finally coming on. That's good. Uh, so let's see. So how's everyone doing? How are you, how are you guys doing? We got five uh, people on there right now. How's everyone doing? How's life? Good. Because we care about you as well. So this is, we want to make sure that you We're guys... We're starting are... a counseling group as well. We'll go live with that at nine <laughs> on our other channel. Right, good call. I like that, I like that. You know, I, I was a counselor. I do for, know that. Yeah, 19 years before I did this. Keeping busy. All right, Mike, thank you. Hi, Bryce. I had questions, but I forgot them. Well, Bryce, That's that nice. doesn't help us at all right That's now. the story of my life. <laughs> I go into Joanne's office, and I just walk right back out. And you're just like, what was I here for? Don't even remember. Got it. Well, everyone, hello. So uh, we have a little notes today. All a right. little bit of notes. A little bit of notes, because... And we are going to start doing this here at the Naval Park, which I have not done, and we've never done it here before. But I was doing a little digging, all right? Doing a little digging around today with the submarine. 
It's National Submarine Day on Monday, all right? So we worked with Trent and the USS Silver Sides, and we did a video. Uh, he asked a bunch of different submarines, museums around the country to do a little 15, 20 second uh, you know, happy birthday wish to, for National Submarine Day, and we were part of that. That's cool. Yeah, so like that, that was released on Facebook, I guess, their Facebook page at USS Silversides, and thank you to Trent for putting that together. Uh, but that also led me to do a little digging, and do you know April 9th? I did not know this. April 9th was the day of when the conversion of the Croker finished from, an, from a Gato to an SSK was April 9th, 1953. I did know that. You did? No. <laughs> oh my God, you're going to give me heart palpitations for a second. I was going to say, how did you know that? Anyway, I did not know that. This joker over here, he did not know that. So I, I put it into the yearly calendar so we can do something regarding that because that's a real, you know, everyone loves to talk about our World War II service and that's great, 11 sinkings, you know, that's really cool. But including their most famous sinking. Yeah, the Niagara. The Niagara. Niagara? Niagara, yeah. as opposed to the Niagara, which a lot of people, oh, you're missing the I. <laughs> no, 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 it's the Niagara. The right? one that took down the, the was at the battle that took down the Juno. The Juno. Yes. yes. Right. That was at the battle. We don't think it was the one. But no, we'll just say it is. Okay. I'm just kidding. If it's not, it's not. Okay. Uh, remind me for Edward. It's tax season, so that's my excuse. All right, Bryce, I got it. Um, how did the leak? Okay, well, uh, remind us about Edward. All right. I really would have loved to have walked outside today. With I know the we were we were talking about walking outside, but we just didn't want to. Um, the Wi-Fi gets a little fuzzy. Yeah. From between here and the front of the ship for some reason. Um, so that's something we got to figure out. But we did want to show you guys the Sullivans because she's having a hard time. She's yeah. having a rough go of it. Yeah, she's worse before she gets better, but it's, there's a lot going on today, so we can get into that in greater detail. Uh, but for National Submarine Day, and for now April 9th, it was her SSK conversion. Um, I don't have much about the commissioning. If they've re I don't think they decommissioned. They might have just put her in reserve, and therefore maybe they wouldn't recommission her, like a full ceremony, things like that. I've never seen any records of they of the croaker okay. recommissioning after her conversion. They just kind of put her in the water and repaired her. Uh, but I could do a little bit more. But So for those two dates, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Gato class, <laughs> going right back to World War II. All right, I'm not talking about the SSK class, but we could. So we have a little, uh, we have a little information about that. Do you guys know how many Gatos were constructed during World War II? And the answer is no. Don't tell. Let's see if they yeah, know. Yeah, let's see. Ask them a question. How many? How many Gatos were constructed during World War II? No Google searches. You have to well, guess. You have to guess. A lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yes, Bryce. You are very true. What did Edward say? Edward asked, "Would it, would, or would it have been just uh, reclassification?" Yeah, it was a probably reclassification. They kept her. They kept the whole number, obviously. Michael says, bunches. Yes, hello, Michael. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, there was just an SSK as opposed to an SS246. All right, so there were 77 Gatos constructed during World War II. That was the largest right, uh, class. It was, they were started right before, pe right at the end of peacetime. And so some people think there were 73 Gatos, but there were four that were supposed to be Baleos, but then they were converted to Gatos because that's the only blueprints that the shipyard had. They didn't have the new Baleo. So it's 77. Uh, 20 of them were sunk, all right, out of the 52 total. Uh, and so they were the last, even though they were a little different than the prior classes. Didn't we do a video? on that and like at the end of the video we had like the list of the ships list of the of we did the that submarines. for the fletchers we did that for the fletchers we didn't do it for the subs no i have not done uh what about the gato class you know like i did for the fletchers and the cleveland okay. i haven't done a 
what do I call those? What's up with the Fletchers? Or I can't remember what the name of the video is. How about? How about those Fletchers? Or how about, how about those, those Clevelands? That's right. How about those Gatos? How about those Gatos? Right. But I, I should do that. Um, so what they did was from prior classes, the Gatos were about five feet longer. All right. They were about 50 tons heavier than prior classes. And they, but they were the last of the thin-skinned boats, which the, and the tef, test depth was about 300 feet, where prior classes were about 250. So they were able to go about 50 feet deeper at the test depth, five feet longer, 50 tons heavier. Uh, but they were the last of the thin skin. Once the Baleos came out, their test depth did to 400, not 300 feet. So, and they use that HTS, that high tensile steel, a little bit more than the Gato does. Um, but yes, seven of them were converted, all right, into SSK or guppies. And there are two remaining today. The Kavala and the Croker. I, I just can't remember where the hell the Kavala is. <laughs> oh boy, this is brutal. So, also I have in my notes here that they modified the negative down express tank to give the boat extra ballast to aid in her uh, submerging below the water. Right, because they were longer, it took the Gatos a little bit longer to get down to periscope depth. They want to get it at about uh, 60 seconds, 70 seconds. And they were up at probably about 75 seconds, 80 seconds to start off with while they were testing the boats. So they used this, uh, the Down Express tank, which was right in the blade, right in the nose of the boat, and they would fill that with water to give it that little extra ballast. So as it's going down, you have that little extra weight in the nose to push it down a little bit quicker. And then they were able to get down to 55, 60 seconds to get to periscope depth, which is 65 feet. So if you think about how nice math is that, you're going down one foot a second. Hmm. You know, if you need to emergency submerge you know, general okay. quarters, all that stuff. So you're able to test uh, periscope depth is 65 feet below. You wanted to hit that 60, 65 second threshold. So you're completely under within a minute. So uh, the... I do have some notes on the Cavella, if you want. I, Roke. I w Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. That is one of my favorite stories. Okay, okay he'll tell that story. But let's review okay, real quick. Real so the... Seven of those converted in the SSKs were the Grouper, the Angler, the Bashaw, the Bluegill, the Bream, Kavala, and Croker. All right, and again, the ones that are remaining, Kavala I know is 244, so two, two hull numbers before us. Uh, and they both can be viewed today as museum ships. Are they in Texas? Galveston, Texas. That's it. Bada bing. Okay, but Stephen filling it in. I love this story. Okay, so June 15th, 1944, uh, she depart departed with the mobile fleet for Operation Ago. Ago? Like Ago. Like Le here we Lego ago. my Lego. Like here we ago. <laughs> you know. A dash. Listen, go. I didn't make it up. Uh, a counterattack against Allied forces in the Mariana Islands. Her strike waves suffered heavy losses from the U.S., but some survived, including. I didn't even, okay. So we're talking, <laughs> I didn't even tell them what the, what the hell we're talking about. Okay, so the USS Kavala um, is famous for sinking a Japanese aircraft carrier. Do you believe that? Aircraft carrier. The, I'm gonna butcher this, and I do apologize to all of our Japanese followers. Shokaku. The Shoka Shokaku. Yep. Shokaku, okay. So you guys are probably like, what the hell is he talking about? Or what? they're like, yeah, we know already. Some of them might say that, that but yeah, true. yeah, yeah. I forgot to mention the ship. So she was out there June 15th, 1944 with some other um, ships in her fleet. She survived, but then on June 19th at 1122, Three, possibly four, torpedoes yeah. from the submarine USS Kavala under Commander Herman J. Kostler struck the Shikaku. Yes. Okay. 
Um, that it, was a huge aircraft carrier too. That was like an experimental, like super carrier for the time. So she had been refueling and uh, rearming aircraft. It was in an extremely vulnerable condition. The torpedo started fires that pr proved it impossible to control. At 1210, an aerial bomb exploded, detonating aviation fuel vapors, which had spread throughout the ship. Nice. Boom. The order to abandon ship was given, but before the actuation, uh, evacuation had progressed very far, she abruptly took on water forward and sank. Bow first. Um, and All right, so she went so they down did by the bow. Yeah, so they did rescue the captain and about 570 men. Yeah, that was that was a super. You know what book that is? They really tell that story great in Edward Beach's Submarine, which is a book he published, I think, in 1953, 1954. So it's Submarine with the exclamation point is the name of that book. And of course, he's famous for Run Silent, Run Deep. But this was his first book, and he talks about the exploits of different submarines during World War II, and that is a fabulous story. He just weaves that real nice yarn, so to speak. So what are some we of these? We got some, some new guests arriving a little late, but ne better late than never, right? Yeah, better late. Um, John Dugan, he's here. Hey, John. Zanan, Zain, Zainan. I know, I know. We, I know. I, we asked about a month ago or two months ago. Us, yeah. We still get it wrong. Sorry. I do apologize. Zanan. Zanan. I, it might be Zanan. It's Thank Zanan. you, sorry. I, th I believe it's Zanan. Okay. Husky is here. Hey, Husky. Hoist is here. Hoist, um, all right. Let's see that. Bryce likes our humor. Um, my older, oh, can say Husky is, my older brother went to a meeting a few days ago with the pioneer of the COD, told him to ask if they are allowed to run the engines like the Silver Sides. Uh, apparently they can. Can you do that? <sighs> Sorry, Husky, our engines are not in working order. All right, the Cobias are, the Cods are, Silver Sides. We, again, uh, not again, okay, maybe some of you are hearing for this for the first time. We did not have a very strong volunteer organization here for many, 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 many years, which means never. All right, and so we lost all of that institutional knowledge that we would have had if we engaged people. Uh, and so if you look at other boats, I mean, certainly the Slater is a beautiful example of their volunteer force. And if you've been watching them online uh, on their YouTube channel, they've got all these dedicated guys that know what they're doing, you know, and so that's going to be something for next week because we have John Epps, right, from the USS Slater, John Epps from the USS Slater next week is our special guest. So he'll be here somewhere maybe. We don't really know yet, but we're going to have it, we're going to bring them to you and we have a few questions and that's one of the questions I want to know is how you fostered that great volunteer program so to make a short story very long our engines do not run so Husky did follow up with um, if they were so if they did work could we be allowed to do it legally here in New York do you mean we, meaning us as an I think organization? I, 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 and I assumed, I said in New York, I'm, I'm assuming that's what you mean, Husky, but... Um, would we be allowed to turn them on? Legally do it, yeah. I would assume so. I don't know of any... All the others that have their engine working will run them twice a year, mm -hmm. and they have the ceremony and things, and you can hear, you see all the diesel blasting out. So I don't know what would prevent it other than, like, is it just too pollution? You know, it would be too polluted right. now, like they don't oh, fit yeah, EPA environmental standards. environmental issues, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Um, Hoist wants to know how much to get it working. Well, how much you got? Yeah, you start, <laughs> you're starting to go fund me for us? <laughs> I know, right? Uh, we need the brains, we need the expertise. Uh, and engines and engines and engines, right? But these are 16-cylinder. These are right out of locomotives, all right? They're electric diesel. We could probably modify it at the very least, though, to... Um, but I mean, the pistons, you know, I mean, the pistons are like this. They probably weigh 400 pounds each or something like that. So, uh, so hoist says, ask for forgiveness, not for permission. You got it. That's the way I like to live. I, that's, uh, there's another quote too that I love that's in, similar to that is I hate regrets more than apologies. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> I like that. No, no, no. That's, 
Right. There's we have embraced that, and I've done things on board, and then the management's like, "What are you doing?" And I said, "Oh, well, yeah, I'm just doing it, right?" You know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, whether it's moving things on the ships or, you know, changing a compartment around, and that's my job. I own it, and I full speed ahead, damn the torpedoes, grid. Grand year. And we gotta own it and take the responsibility right. if it doesn't work out. If That's it right. does, you know, it's always nice. Damn but straight. Um, Husky said he, either the New Jersey or the Iowa cannot do that, are not allowed to do it. Interesting. So. Uh, that's interesting now, their engines. Now the New Jersey is in Camden, right? Not Philadelphia? Correct. Okay. But I mean, their engines are a lot, they're, they're a lot bigger than a submarine <laughs> engine, right? Right. I mean, yeah, yeah, the turbines turning, you know, the Iowa, for God's sakes. Oh my God, I can't even imagine. Their engine room is large as the, our space right here. You know. So. Okay, so John has some input on that. So it depends on any agreement signed with the museum when the, when the museum acquired it, I would guess. Slater could if we wanted because we got the ship from Greece. So they can run the, and you guys do run the engines at the Slater. I think you guys running under your own power, I believe, at some point, right? Maybe to go to dry dock or something where you're under your own power, but those are great videos too. I love those time lapse going up and down the Hudson. I love those. So Bryce chimed in with um, New Jersey slash Iowa steam. cannot because they are steam driven and they are not allowed to operate any steam engines. Oh, all right. Well, thanks guys. Uh, we, I have not looked this much into it, but you guys seem to have a lot of information. Which is great. Uh, this is, yeah, that's yeah, exactly, this is, awesome. this is what we are looking for. I would love to at least get an engine put back. Now, in her SSK conversion, uh, one of the engines was removed. So instead of four, uh, in two separate engine rooms, we now have three. So the SSK conversion was trying to minimize the sound uh, and minimize the noise from the boat itself, either to disrupt our own sonar or of course to stay hidden from uh, the Russian forces during uh, the Cold War. Uh, but we, what we do is we have them in various stages of put togetherness, all right? So one is, almost looks completely done and then we've taken the other two apart in stages so you can then look right down see the uh, shafts uh, we have a piston hanging there uh, but yeah I mean just to get one I mean my god when I was on the Cobia and that guy started it up for me there was nothing better in the world you know pulling the, you know getting the RPMs up to about 500 RPMs the airflow and that's the sort of experience that you can't tell unless you can stand in the engine room and hear it go right we have fake sounds but you know but they're you don't experience it at all especially on a submarine so that would be one of the projects to apologize for and not to ask permission for. So um, John says they run on a service generator. Yeah, okay, so it's not steam, right? right. It's just like a generator, yeah. Um, and let's see, okay. Hoy says they can't run their engines due to agreements with the Navy. I'm sure the Kroger was donated before. A lot of that was put in writing. Um, that Slater would be had good. tugs to dry dock. Got it. Um, I'm going to come back to Edward. He has a question, but um, oh, Husky was asking where John worked. Um, the BBs can't run their engines due to the museum ship donation agreement. So it sounds like... Yeah, maybe the battleships just have an agreement specifically for them. I have not come across anything in the archives in our Naval Park records from 1976 on. I have not come over that agreement, but that doesn't mean we don't already have one. That's interesting to see what our agreement would be with that, right? Wouldn't it be cool to like pull that out and? Take it would a look be. At it? We I mean, do have a. Fun. I know offhand where the contract is for the Sullivans, mm -hmm. like, and it's you know a 15-page document or something like that. Uh, but I don't know about the Little Rock, and I certainly don't know about the Croker, it's because again, the should... Croker was a clawback, right? And it was brought, right? You know, 1988, it, right? Yes. And it was where first, Connecticut? Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, Groton, Connecticut. Okay. Groton. Uh, yeah, no, the electric boat company. Um, that was a museum ship, right? That was just bought by, a, I love to say it, a supermarket magnet. He just developed and built supermarkets. And what then when it, I don't remember his name. But then when I, when they came up for availability, uh, he just bought it or something. He just got it from the Navy. You and just then he buy just, it. You yeah. Just buy a submarine. Right. And then he just opened so, the door. Okay. So like, so the Sullivans and the Little Rock, they're owned by the Navy still. So the Croker is not. 
I would, yeah, that's a good parse. I, I like that very particular language. I would say that the Sullivan's and Little Rock are owned by the city of Buffalo. Okay. The but Navy they're on loan them, from the Navy, or? Well, they turned them over to the city of Buffalo. Okay. The city of Buffalo then opened up the Naval Park Committee Incorporated, which is what we morphed into and developed into. As a so private are, as a As the managing agency to manage the ships. Right. Right. For the Croker, because she was already privately owned, the Navy did claw her back. And then I think just vernacularly, they are like, who wants a sub? And we were like, yeah. <laughs> Because. With the jazz hands too? Uh, yeah. <laughs> the Fosse, the Bob Fosse. Because our first goal was to get the USS Bakuna in 1975 is when we started this. We wanted the Bakuna. Unfortunately, but fortunately for them, the Independent Seaport Museum is the proud owners of the USS Bakuna now and uh, they take wonderful care of her. But our goal, when the organization, the agency was first started, was to get the Bakuna. So we've always wanted to get a submarine here, and it wasn't until 88 when we did that. Boy, I'm all jacked up right now, guys. My blood is all up. It, it's not hard to get Shane excited. <laughs> but the wildness in my blood is, is very easy to turn wild. All right, so we got some more stuff here. Who owned the Croker before, John? That was John, okay. Um, let's go back up a little bit. Uh, yes. Service please. generator runs electricity. This is John again from the Slater. Okay. Um, we use it to power the power on board when we leave port. Otherwise, our four diesel engines don't run. Probably not since 1990-ish. Um, and then Hoyt says, Massachusetts had very little in its agreement. The U.S. Navy kept putting more requirements in the agreements as time went on up through BB-61 Iowa uh, being donated in 2011. So the I'm still trying to digest that. The Hoist, I don't know. I know. I'd love to know Hoist's background. I mean, you just have such knowledge of this, and why do you have? Why do you have? Why do you know this, right? And I don't mean it in a negative way, but like I'm very. And you don't need to do anything like here, but maybe you've already spoken. I know you did some work at the New Jersey, but I don't know if it was official or if you were volunteering. Uh, but you, you, you have a lot of great knowledge there. Husky wants to know if they could do a giveaway of the Bakuna. Yes, it is a Dr. Pepper. We're supposed to put tape over it. Cause oh, yeah. I'm just, I don't know. Right. Yeah. So Ryan did a YouTube episode on New Jersey Agreement. It's worth watching. Okay. Thanks, John. Bryce says, uh, New Jersey's YouTube videos discuss it a lot. Uh, Hoist just visited the, the, okay. the Dirty Jers. Yeah, yeah. They did a collision video I saw. I haven't watched it yet, but... They did a collision video fairly recently, so that was nice. Oh, that's cool. We should do one. We already did, I think. <laughs> a couple days before, yeah, okay, good. Uh, no, but you're right, I like, that, I like that Ryan's getting into the collections. Now, they have so many videos, you know, you can't watch them all. But uh, I, I enjoy going into the collections and talking about some of the artifacts that we have. You know, Steven's always trying to get me to do a mystery artifact, uh, and there's a lot of them, and I should do that. Uh, but I like going to the collection, and I highlighted the scrapbooks one year. Uh, uh, you know, certainly our cruise books. There's a lot more to highlight. You know, the USS Liberty. Oh boy, I didn't tell you about that. Oh, well, hey, here we don't. go, everyone. I am making a hard right here. Uh, I got a couple calls about that USS Liberty video that I did. Okay. Like, Shane, you don't know what you're talking about. Phone All calls. right. Again. Really? Yeah. From oh, people multiple. that, from people too. From okay. people that served aboard the Liberty or the Little Rock at that time. Okay. That's a very touchy subject. A lot of people have that, you know, they go down the cons conspiratorial bent of this was done intentionally by the Israelis. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I said, listen, guys, I, you can see it in the video. I'm reading the command history. That's what we have in our collection. I don't have conjecture. I don't have conspiracy thoughts. I have, from the captain himself, his report to the Navy. Yes, is it official? Is it sanitized a little bit? It might be. But that's what I had to go on, and that's what I told these guys. I said, I'm not going to get into conjecture about whether the Israelis knew that it was an American ship or not, you know, the uh, technical research ship. But, you know, so that was very interesting that 
Don't make him mad. Who, me? Yeah. I have a wildness of the blood, guys. You have a uh, <laughs> passion. Passion. We'll call it passion. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, okay, but... All right, let's see. Dr. Prepper. Um... John said, you had me thinking of destroyer escort collisions, but there were 563 <laughs> built during the war, so a lot of work. Exactly. Uh, that is very funny. And, you know, I'm going to, you know what, uh, John, I am going to ask a question now, but I'd like to cover it more in detail next week if I, we can remember. Now it will be on tape, so we should remember. How many destroyer escorts are are viewable as museum ships in America today. I hear one, but I've also heard two. So is the difference like one's on land and one's on water? Or, you know, I think you guys potentially rightly say, you know, that we're the only destroyer escort museum in America. But then there's like DE257 or something like that. That, But, but I, so I don't know. I, so I, John does say two. <clears throat> um, there are six left in the entire world. Got it. Okay. Six left in the entire... Okay, so I just was curious, because I've read... So oh. the Galveston and the Albany. Wait, in Galveston, Texas, and in Albany. Oh, okay, so Slater and then... And then so whatever the, the one is, the 257 to E257 or something. I can't remember the number, but... So Galveston again, we got the Kavala, and they're probably right next to, yeah, where the DE is. There possibly could be a seventh, but it's not known. That's from John. Interesting. Okay, so it's the Stewart in Texas. Got it, yeah, okay, good, all right. I wanted to, because I was gonna promote you guys as like the last DE museum in the country, but that is not the case. Now, when I go to these conferences, a lot of these ships don't send representatives, so I don't get to meet them, right? And so, I mean, we don't have the budget to start traveling around unless we started to do it on our own. But, I mean, there's a lot of museum ships that I just don't even know about because they don't either, I don't meet them, we don't have any interaction with them or anything, but, so. Um, so, Bryce remembers this question. <laughs> so, uh, could the Little Rock only fire its missiles from targets behind the ship? It looked like the targeting tracking drums could only move so far being on, aft, uh, on the aft of the ship. Yeah, I'd say it was that, I would say, thanks Bryce, I think it's, you know, you probably have that 210 degree um, motion or sight range of about 210 degrees. So when you're right, you, the drums would be able to go look up a little bit, the starboard midship and port midship, but not 360. So whatever that degree is, 210 maybe, you know, if you're cutting it like a Pac-Man or something like that, like a, the shape of a Pac-Man. Right, yeah, I get it. 210 degrees about. Um, you know, and so they would yeah, have it seven. Wouldn't clear the missile house. Right, it wouldn't. Right, yeah, it they would just hit the ship. Right. So you could have you could have um, you could have seven or nine ready to go. So and that only took about twenty seconds. Once you fired two off the launcher, you could have seven or nine ready to go, and to load those took about twenty seconds. So obviously, in that twenty seconds, now the the, the jets or even your position yourself has totally changed, uh, and so they would be able to send it up pretty well. They were again, they never fired them in anger, but they would be able to definitely cover the ship and they also had nuclear weapons on board you could use a low yield nuclear weapon and just blink. so John says that um, one was captured by North Vietnam at the end of the Vietnam War um, as of 1999 it was a training hoax so probably sunk by now that would be the seventh ship I remember reading something about Do you know which ship it was John I remember reading something about that now, like, oh, they have one of our DEs, and, and like, we just didn't ask for it back or something like that, I think, I can't, that's interesting. Yes, one was captured, that's right. Yeah, that's cool. So I guess, uh, what do you have to say today? What's going on with you and your world? Oh man, we uh, had to be an SVN Navy boat. That was hoist. 
Okay. <laughs> See, yeah. I don't, I don't, maybe. Okay. Good. Thanks, Hoist. <laughs> Had to be so we have our encampments coming up in South Vietnam Navy boat. Yeah, it probably well, it certainly was one of ours. Uh, but they can whether the our allies were using it or us. I don't know. Maybe John will have more information about that. Yeah. So yeah, we got the encampment starting, which is cr pretty crazy. Okay. So we I know we've discussed it before. We have overnight encampments that we do here. Boy Scout troops, Girl Scout troops, they get to stay on board. Families can do it too. Uh, I did get somebody ask, they emailed me and they're like, oh, can it be like a father and son? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. You know, that's fine. Um, like not attached to a Boy Scout? or Right. And they, we can. We do have families that sign up. Absolutely. Um, okay. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, that's fine. And then he wrote back and he's like, I should probably tell you my son's an adult. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I was like, yeah, no, sorry. We can't, we can't do that. Um, but I mean, it's, you know, there are people out there that would love to do that. Oh, well, don't get me. How many times did I wanted to start doing a ship B&B like the Cobia did, right? Oh, you man. turn it like the submarine or one of the ships into like a hotel and one family can rent it for the night by themselves. What? You didn't hear about this? Were you working here at the time? I talked about it for years. I, I, don't I know. said we, we for 500 bucks, you can rent out the Little Rock. You can sleep on it. We'll have a continental breakfast for you in the morning. You know, you could shower. You have the whole run of the ship by yourself. Um, you know, the one staff person will be there. You have a walkie talkie in case you get lost or something like that. And yeah, I would just mention this to people. People were like, I would, me and my family would pay $500 in a heartbeat. Right? $500 Just nothing. for them to stay on board. You know, and even if you have a family of five or six. You charge them well, a billion dollars. 500 bucks is. A billion you know, dollars. But it went nowhere. Really? Yes. And I said it multiple times. I think we times. should revive that conversation. Be good. Let's do it. I think we should definitely. Um, so any, uh, we'll get. Uh, we have a couple more things coming in. Um, I just want hey, to Scott. wrap up oh, with the. Oh, we got to uh, talk about Scott too. Yes. Um, so yeah, the overnight encampments. We're just you know getting into it, like full steam ahead. It's starting in two weeks. So we're. My department is very. Department my department, which consists of me, um, <laughs> is, is very busy with that. So it's. Um, Hectic, a little hectic here. Yeah, it's hectic. But it's good hectic. It's good. It's good. It's it keeps good the hectic. weight. It keeps the weight off. Yeah. You know, we're always like going and always sweating and always, you know, us type A personalities. Right. You know. And it's good because you know it keeps you busy and you're never. There is never a lack of things to do <laughs> around right. here. That is for sure. You're right. You're never sitting there for 20 minutes just saying twiddling, twiddling your thumb. Hello, Scott. Uh, I gotta scroll up here. We got some. We have a Patty? Wait, hold on. Who's yeah, I know Patty. Oh, you do? Yeah, we're, we go way back. Okay, good. Hi, yeah, Scott. I married her daughter. Oh, okay. Hi, Patty. Uh, seriously, <laughs> right? Yeah. Are you oh, being that's serious? My mother in law. Okay, yeah, okay. So we met. How are you, Patty? Oh, yeah, that's right. You guys yeah. met. So what does Scott say? Uh, All right, and then let's go back John here, says, oh, you're going up. Okay. Yeah, because we, okay. There's a lot so, going on. Yeah, here. We, we get. We got lost here. I'm not, um, Husky says, I'm not sure if I could say the word because it's YouTube, but do you still have the bullet launchers in that one deck? I remember going in there a few times in my overnight stays before. We do have bullet launchers, uh, especially in the Mar deck, in the Marine detachment. All right, so if that's what you, if I'm, if I'm uh, letting you off the launch pad and I get what you're putting down, I think we have a lot of bullet launchers in the Mar deck. Marine detachment on Little Rock, yes. Um, John said that it was USS Force, Forster uh, DE-334 is the one that North Vietnam um, had captured. Yeah, Scott okay. says hi. hi Scott. He also said he would do that deal of sleeping on board for $500. <laughs> um, I love, see, people love that idea. Hoy said we gave a bunch of stuff the, to the RVEN and SVN. Um, Patty asked, we found out why the news Little Rock is taking, oh, we found out why the new Little uh -huh. Rock is taken out of service. We spoke with Shane about it at your opening. You're giving away top secret information here. Wow, okay. <laughs> yes, Patty, we did talk about it a little bit. They brought it up while we were having some munchies in our tactical operations center. Yes. We call it the talk. <laughs> no, yeah, right. Um, let's see. Oh, did somebody ask about the Little Rock? Is that... 
Uh, you have a maximum number of people on an overnight. Uh, we do, so it used to be bigger. Uh, it used to be about 250, um, then COVID hit and, you know, I just noticed for like the first time, I've gone days without hearing that word. Really? Yeah. Oh. Last week I went like three or four days and I was like, you know what, I haven't heard that word. Y yes. And but it's, it's nice because that wasn't happening. Right. Like you heard it every day yeah. in every conversation. Yeah. So. That's a good, ob but it is coming back. But that's a good observation. Um, so yeah, it was 250. We, we didn't do the encampment for two years um, due to COVID. Um, this year we came back and we didn't know. We started planning it in like November, December, and December is when New York, well, Erie County was first for the, that wave. Um, they shut everything, they, you know, mask, vaccines, all that stuff. Um, and then New York State followed as an entire state in December. Oh, interesting. So we okay. had no idea where, we didn't know if we were gonna do it. Right. We didn't know where it was gonna be. So we did decide to go ahead with it and we had some guidelines set up and you know we were we had agreed that whatever erie county and new york state say we should follow those guidelines so we were gonna have people masked and um you know vaccines are definitely on the you know a thought in the process that we were gonna require it for like 12 and older or whatever it was but um thankfully we have been able to re relax all those mandates and um we have no mandates now come on, you don't have to be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, we're still trying to get up to speed with the staffing. So you're right. capping at it. At 155 right now. Okay. Um, I think that the plan is starting in the fall when we hope to be back to totally normal. Because again, we didn't know where we were gonna be. So we kind of, you know, treaded lightly on it. Um, but I think we're gonna start capping out at like 175. It just gives people a better experience. It's less crowded. Um, taking up less of the ship, so there's things to do, um, more things to do. Yeah, we've kind of ramped up the uh, the program a little bit, and and that's not a knock at how it's been done. Um, the two guys that pretty much run the program, Tom and Andrew, have done a fantastic job, and we've kind of just built off of the the model that they've created because it, it's worked for so long. Um, and then we're doing like a educational aspect. We'll have like a little 20 minute lecture where they would also after that, they do an activity related to the lecture. And we have cool. two, two different lectures, one's for younger kids, one's for older kids. Cool. So the activities are also based on that. Like the younger kids are gonna, so we're doing cryptology, right? And code talking and the Navy and all of that and Morse code and stuff. So we have, uh, you know, the little kids will make those little spinners. Oh yeah, they yeah, make yeah, their own, that's and then cool. They can make their own code. Message. Yeah, they, well they can make their own like, Oh, the code. Right, they make the code themselves. Cool, so that's it's, cool. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, and we're gonna watch some pretty good movies this year. I, we picked out some, some good movies. Um, major Pain? It is not Major Pain this year, so I do apologize. <laughs> um, but it is, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And, and again, it, it's been a great model. Um, that we, you know, and I've worked with the other two guys, Tom and Andrew, to like yeah. really kind of perfect this, and they're great dudes, and we're looking forward to cool. uh, making it as as great as possible. Um, so, yeah, yeah, about 170 is what we're looking at for this. I mean, picture. John wrote 250 question mark blah blah blah. It's yeah, a lot of people. I mean, that is a lot of people. It is, but we've got birthing for days. you know for, for all day, the days. yeah for all the days of our lives. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, on the Little Rock, it's not on the Sullivans, it's not on the Croker. Uh, so the Little Rock, yeah, I mean, we use five I mean, birthings. Usually, like there was about 1,100 people at a time on the ship. Yeah, 11, 12. So 250 yeah. really is. Yeah, but for them, but for. I mean, 250 for, is for almost... me to run a program <laughs> with 250 <laughs> people go. is plenty. There you go. Um, <laughs> no, that's true. But uh, yeah, that's for Boy Scouts, uh, Girl Scouts. I mean, anyone, we get a lot of people from Toronto, we get a lot of people from Ohio, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, downstate New York, um, West Virginia, we've had. So, Ohio, you, did you say Ohio? Because that's like our biggest is Ohio. I Ohio. Think. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Oh. And we need some sleep, huh? Um, <laughs> so if you have, if you're attached in any way, now you know it's up to 250. So, but yeah, let's. I, I love that ship B and B idea. All right, so we're gonna, you know, Scott loves that idea, and we got to get to Scott. Uh, Scott loves the idea. Who is it? Hoist. 
Hoist. <laughs> he says, he does say finally, I'm so sick of that word. Okay, yeah. So COVID, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Scott says, I'm sure COVID really hurt you guys. Um, it didn't help us. Yeah, it hurt, sure. it hurt bad. Listen, it, it, we went, we lost, let's just say it right as it is, we lost 88% of our yearly income. 88%, we were only bringing in 12%. In 2020, right? In 2020, 2021 was a little bit better. A little better. better, I think it was in the 70s. Yeah, it was in the 70s, but I mean, losing 88% of your yearly income, all earned, ticket sales, gift shop, things like that. Um, um, you know, oh boy, we're, okay, so let's. Yeah. So let's, hi, says, hi, Ken. Sounds History. like you have some good activities planned. Ken says, please not major pain. And no, it is not. <laughs> I think, I, think uh, I have to rewatch it, but I think we're going 1917. It's such a great movie. Uh, yeah. Did you not I, like it? Listen, I really enjoyed it, but I mean, if you're talking for 14 year olds. Or I'm talking like high school age kids. Okay, so 17, 16. 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay. I don't remember if it's rated R. I think it is. Is it? But, but I think it's just the overtone of the film. It's oh, not okay, like yeah, a right. glorious bastard or something. Yeah, I don't know if it's that gory. Right, relative to other movies, but uh, Dumbo Drop, what is it? Operation Dumbo Drop, is that a movie? Is it is it? a movie. Okay, I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want the older kids to enjoy it. If you guys have any good um, recommendations for movies, for uh, Ken says Dunkirk, and Dunkirk is one of Ooh. not only my, one of my favorite war, wartime movies, but Dunkirk is one of my favorite movies of all time. But I, I think that there are not many kids that will stay engaged throughout that movie. There's very little dialogue. You know, the time lapse, the different time periods that each right. time takes each I mean, I would play Dunkirk place. all day long. Um, Michael says down Periscope. Um, oh, we watched yeah. the, Hoy says we watched the gory stuff at 15, 16. That's what I'm thinking. And it's not just like unnecessary gory, like horror right. movie, right? right. It's, it's, I mean, it's what happened. But if somebody can look that up for me, what the rating of 1917 is. And then you talked about that uh, they will not grow old. They will not, they shall not grow old. They shall not grow so old. So you want to talk about that? Because you introduced that to me. And it's I fantastic. Could, I could talk about it. Yeah, talk about that first. Would that be for the, kid, would that be for the oldest? So what we're going to do is we're going to do um, um, a, a video, a movie for the older kids, a movie for the younger kids, which is going to be bed knobs and broomsticks, if you guys are interested. <laughs> I couldn't believe okay. it when you threw that out again. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's it's a good one. It's me being a kid again. And, uh, and then a documentary. So the documentary that um, I'd like to show is Shane introduced me to. Look at Ken's, the last. I know, Das Boot. Yeah. U571, Midway. Midway's one that I thought of. Yeah, so, kid, yeah. Oh, thank you. These are great. We yeah. could just spend I know, another really hour could. on this. But um, you should write some of these down. D das Boot is uh, one of the best movies they always say of all time. Thanks, Scott. Scott, I don't know if we're going to get to your uh, thing. I want to start talking right, about it. We will. We we'll get to it right now. Okay. You tell about the documentary, then we're going straight to Scott. I'm not even looking at the comments, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Sorry, everybody. And thank you again for being here. We love the fact that you're interacting with us still. And you know, I mean, it would take a lot for me to come in and tune into something once every week or every two weeks, right? So that means something that, you know, it's like, oh, I got to tune in tonight. But you guys seem to enjoy it. Oh, thank you, you for I mean, all your support. We hit 38 views already tonight, which is great. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's great. good. Um, and we're back up to like our, yeah, Normal last time, 20. last time we had, it was a little quiet. Last time? In was March it really? 30th. I don't you remember? No, I don't. I forgot why, though. I don't remember yesterday, for gosh sakes. Okay, so They Shall Not Grow Old, World War I uh, documentary. Fabulous Peter Jackson, all right? So there's orcs and goblins running around everywhere. Frodo, <laughs> little hobbits. <laughs> Bilbo, Bilbo Baggins. Bagginses. <laughs> right? Uh, anyway, I'm sorry, because uh, it's a beautifully <laughs> made film. Uh, but, uh, and he colorizes it and gets it into that frames per second that makes it more, yeah. uh, you know, instead of all jumping. That's not like even he, the best part. The best part is. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying, I'm just getting geared up. Oh, you're, okay. Uh, so that's, the, I saw it in the theater. It's moving. The one thing that I didn't like about it is that he has those interviews overlaid. They don't stop talking, right? So kind of like a commentary. It's a commentary. They're telling their own experiences. These, these World War I guys were interviewed by the uh, British Museum or something in 1950, 55. 
Now what Peter Jackson did was he just ran the answers to questions the whole film. I felt there was times where it can be poignant and silent, but pretty much there's talking throughout the whole film. So why don't you, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a magic, it's a, it's a fabulous. But the, remember the dialects. Oh yeah, tell that one, that's fabulous. So what they did was they, they had the sound um, they added they added vocals to it so you can they like read their lips or however they had they, a forensic lip reader right forensic forensic lip reader and they would tell by the colors and on their patches and what area of England they were from and Britain that they were from and it would they would find somebody that talked in that dialect to fill in for the voices of the people in World War One and actually if you watch the trailer of it. Um, you could see one of those scenes where a guy is talking and it's a very distinct British yeah, yeah, dialect. Yeah. It's not even like the regular, like, you know. It's very cockney, probably. Oh, yeah. It's, and, and very rough. For them to, re to bring in, like, a forensic lip reader and have somebody dub the voices in the dialect that they would have spoken is, I mean, that's... I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a dream. Yeah. To have that level of ability to do that. Uh, and just from our perspective, historians, archivists, myself, I mean, you can see I'm, I get emotional about it. Yeah. Like, that is astoundingly amazing to be able to hear a silent film, people talking in the dialect because they can tell of the brigade patch. And right. back then it was all based on county and, they you know. They could have just had like Hugh Grant and Harry Potter. <laughs> no, they like, that's what I, it's the commitment. Swiss it's Army like, Man? It's the commitment that Peter Jackson took right. to give you as authentic as a representation as he possibly could. Yeah, And that's astounding. my favorite part of that. Um, yeah, it's it's, oh, that's it's beautiful. Okay, let's get into Scott. Scott, Remember, we're not looking. No, okay. As soon as I said Hi, that, Rick. everyone stopped writing too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rick, how are you? Welcome again. Uh, so Scott and I spoke off campus, so to speak. All right, not on YouTube, not here. He came up with a great idea that I've floated a little bit uh, with uh, uh, Stephen. Uh, that. Um, so Scott kind of said, you know, why don't we, why don't you find a compartment on board uh, the ship and see if, and I developed this after I got off the phone with Scott, but he's like, why don't you really do a deep dive and talk about, you know, the steps and the phases that you would do to bring a space back, talk about tangible things of each phase, scraping, painting, you know, then the cost of, uh, of the uh, supplies or the, uh, you know, what you would need to bring it up to speed. And then I said, why don't we take a compartment on board and turn it into a YouTube sponsorship? Right, so if we create a sign, this is, this is sponsored by our friends and viewers and subscribers of YouTube. And then we use the little YouTube thing. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be really? And then we can do our live shows in that room. Oh man, that's just taking it upper level. Good level. Let you land, man. I'll let you land on that one. But thank you, Scott. So we're, we're, we're kind of, I'm thinking of spaces on board. I'm thinking of how we're going to approach this. Uh, now, you saw the 45 years of degradation, and maybe that's where we all kind of, Scott, you kind of thought, began thinking about this as we did. Uh, I don't know if it would be those spaces. It could be one of those spaces in the 45 years of degradation video. But I would also like you to- Are you to talking about the O3 level where we- Yes. Yes, yeah, okay. Yeah. But I also would maybe like to, uh, maybe ahead. How about that? What's Ken's up? got a, brought up a great point. Okay, read it. I can't, no, no, those things are, go ahead. That's a great idea. Remember when you asked me about YouTube memberships, that's what you should do. Okay, do you have a pen? I, do, I uh, threw it like John Stewart. Remember? Oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. Hoy says we need um, a TV studio. Again, I mean, you guys are more than welcome to start us a GoFundMe. <laughs> I'm not going to say no. You know, we have a CCTV uh, compartment on the Little Rock. Uh, we even had this green screen in like green duct tape from 1976. Uh, but that's been converted into my new research library whenever that gets up and running. So what are we looking at here? Um, the membership, the YouTube membership. YouTube memberships. And we'd actually recently discussed that if last we week, did, if I'm not we mistaken. Did, we we, did. we haven't figured that out yet though, so. No, and we are very, you know, grateful for your 
wisdom. Ken? Yeah. I mean, subject. Ken's channel, please, again, <coughs> check it out. I mean, it's really growing by leaps and bounds It now. really is. I just watched a video. Um, I know I should watch it all the time, but um, I just caught one of your videos, Ken, last week. Um, and you just put out some great content. And, yeah, that's good. Um, I try to watch them as, as often as I can. But you get to travel and do the whole thing. It's, it's a little envious because it's pretty awesome what you get to do. All right, do I have to say it again, Ken? Dirtiest jobs, let's go. 2020. Let's roll with it. So, yeah. We'll, can, we'll talk about that. What else we got going on here? Uh, I think it would be a good thing for everyone to see how to keep a ship preserved and how the Navy does it today. Yeah. That's when we get, um, what is it, CL9? Uh, uh, <laughs> LCS. LCS. Oh, my God. Okay. Do you know what's going on with the Sullivans right now? <laughs> All right. Do we know what's going on with the Sullivans right now? <laughs> I don't Your think heart would jump if you saw the way, just literally today, how she looks today is, you don't want to even, but, so we can't get another ship, man. We just never can't. Never say never. Never say can't. Winners don't say can't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bring it down, champ. New here, rock me here for go God's team. sakes. Go team. Um, but, uh, no, I, I, I'm not saying we can't from like, it's too much of a hurdle. I'm saying we can't because we wouldn't do what's right for the ship. We wouldn't be able to do what's right for the ship. We wouldn't have enough um, resources to of do course. it. Not that we wouldn't do it, but we just wouldn't be able to take on that responsibility. Do I say that we could get another ship? Absolutely, I agree. It's, I absolutely agree. But are we prepared to preserve her moving forward when we have three others that are in desperate need of repair? Now again, LCS nine wouldn't be for 10, 10 years or so, fifteen years. Yeah, we'll get but, more staff, and then by then we'll have more staff. Yes. Um, um, let's see here. Uh, I'm there. I want to stay on board. You can, Ken. Jack says, "Hoist the Jack says no, no to what? I'm sorry. <laughs> you need a TV st Okay. Oh, I don't know. No. So know. Hoist the Jack we, is saying no Hoist to mad? get the LCS nine. He's might saying, no, don't bother trying to get it. I don't know what he's trying to say there, but YouTube memberships, Ken, Ken thank you very much. Uh, I was going to open it up to, uh, and what we'll do is we're going to figure it out. I mean, we're not, we don't want to, you know, this isn't, we're not QVC here, okay? Or televangelists. Or are we? What we want to do is to set up a way of you guys giving oh, five or ten we bucks. don't know what's going on with the Sullivans. Um, oh, that is true, <laughs> because it just happened today. Um, oh, we're, Hi, we're, Dale. Do you want to, do you want to? Okay, so apparently the Buffalo River is down, I've never seen it as down so low. So what I think has happened is it has begun to sink the Sullivan. The Sullivan's is, you know, if you watch that wind video where I'm standing right on the stern, you see the 537 bouncing up and down. If I was out there with the camera right now, you can't even see the Sullivan's. That's how down she is. And somehow, some way, it hasn't been that windy, we have our overboard dumps, okay, that are the holes where you put the, you know, the hoses through for pumps and stuff. Those have gone underwater. And so therefore... She's taking on water. She's taking on water. And that's all I'm going to say because uh, we're doing a survey tomorrow morning. I'm getting the inboard profile, and we're going to draw where all the water is. Are you coming in tomorrow morning? I thought you were off. I am off, but I'm okay. Well, you ruined it now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought I, I am off because but, you do come in though when you're off because that's what you do. That's what I do, but I'm not doing chance. it tomorrow, man. Uh, you know, so so that's I'll where I'll do it and take all the credit. There you go. Typical. All right, uh, but that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna do, we're gonna get a little blue crayon and we're gonna show the multiple feet in the forward, uh, the engine rooms and- What did you call it? What? What are we getting? I don't know, ma'am. Crayons. Crayons? Crayon. Cray crayon. I say crayon. Crayon. I say it like two syllables. Crayons. I say two no, syllables. you said one? Crayon. Crayon. Okay, crayon, I don't know. Are you from New You're from lower, you're I know, from I downstate. Have a stupid you know, okay. I know. Good. Are you, the bilge discharges are now below. Yes, that's what I, well, not the bilge charges, uh, discharges per se, but what we call the overboard dumps. So there's holes in the hull that you can, uh, you know, 
put a pump out, a hose out, a garden hose, things like that. Uh, they aren't in the build spaces, all right? They're in the second platform, so they're down low. But with this water thing going on, I don't know, that all of a sudden, boom, now you have holes this big, just walk. So they're doing a survey tomorrow. I'm going to draw an inboard profile of the ship or get one photocopied out of one of the books that I have. And they are going to each have a copy and they're going to go through each of the spaces. And we are kind of running out of time. We are running out of time. Uh, let's see, Michael says, I've heard the USS Texas is heading into dry dock this summer. Is Great. that something that you schedule every once in a while or is that something that the Texas is doing? Okay, for Michael, thank you. The Texas, I did not hear that the Texas is going into dry dock. That's fabulous. Uh, they are in great need of a great support as well. Uh, they've used the foam system, which I really like. I wish sometimes we'd use that here. Uh, but those are for those torpedo, I can't remember what they call them, but they had torpedo protections on the outside of the hull filled with water. And I think those are their areas that are really degrading. And I mean, of course, the Texas is, oh my God, how many years old? 100 years old or something? So uh, those torpedo blubbers, or uh, I can't remember the, the, the uh, but that extra armor there. All right. Um, to go into dry dock for us is about $4 million. We don't have that. So we are doing the preservations, and you can see some of that in our videos on YouTube. Um, Torpedo blisters. Bad blisters, I call them blubbers or something, right? But yeah, thank you. I couldn't remember. But uh, so I'd like to maybe foam her up as well, but yeah, guys, we've got it's, and once we get it stabilized, all that water will be able to come out over the next week or so, but just this happened today, last night. I, I don't know what happened, but uh, okay, guys, you wanna? Yeah, it is 9.01, man. I know. This, uh, this YouTube membership fundraiser for a compartment on board, sponsored by you guys, five to 10 bucks a month or something for, you know, and then just to re raise some money, then we'll put up a video in there. We'll, you know, we'll, I'd love to list you guys. And then we'll do our get together. Yeah. And put right. you guys on one of our videos. That would be awesome. Only if you're comfortable. All right, but yeah, that, thanks so much, guys. This is, uh, we're going to be back next week, everybody, April 20, with John Epp Can't from wait. the USS Slater. It's our first, it's not DRAC, we know that, but we're happy to have the Slater, our downstate friends. Or they're not down, yeah, they are downstate, but they're east state. East state, <laughs> yeah. Right down um, to 90. And we are very excited to have John with us. We have a lot to talk about. We hope that we can learn some things from them. They can learn some things from us. And the most important is that you guys learn uh, as well. So, or get some good information out of it. Yeah. Can't wait to see you next week, John. I'm very excited for it. Yeah, me too. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up. Thanks so much. Uh, love having you guys around. I miss you guys. I'm sorry. I haven't done videos in a while. I'm going to try to get to some this weekend, but with the book that I'm, you know, I've got deadlines for the, the Naval Park book that I'm writing coming up. It's just we're all under the gun with multiple things. So yeah. So next week, we're not skipping a week. So this way everybody knows we got April 20 concurrent viewers right now. It's all that might be the highest we've ever been. No, I think we had 34 once. Did we? Yes. Yeah, a couple See, months. I don't ago. know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah. All right. We'll see you next week, guys, with uh, John Epp from the Slater in Albany. Looking forward to talking to you guys again next week and See you soon, guys. And go to bed, Cash. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. Which one is it? With the top one that says user five. On top, on top, on top.